So I want to talk to you about naming your bakery business. It's like the, one of the most fun parts about owning a business is you get to name it. It's a huge decision though, right? We feel like, oh, you know, what do I do? How do I make this my own? How do I make sure that people know who I am? And that if I ever, like, here's a good point. If you ever want to open a storefront, can you put that name on the storefront? Things like that. So as humans, we love to name stuff. We like naming our kids, we like naming our pets. We just, we just love it. So sometimes it gets overwhelming though because there's so many choices. You get to be really creative, right? So the whole reason I'm making this video is because I want to help you either determine your business name easier or revamp your business name now and do what they call a rebrand so that later down the line, it's gonna be easier for you. I have made some naming mistakes myself. I have started four different businesses and I would say probably with about two or maybe even three of them, I made some mistakes that I saw the effects of later on. So I'm gonna just share that information with you. And I'm also going to share with you what I've seen over the last 10 years in the bakery industry. Um, basically what I've seen not really work for people and what I've seen constantly, which tells me that it's being overused and that if you were to use certain tactics to name your business, the ones that are being overused, you're probably just gonna kind of fold into the mix and not really stand out business-wise. So I wanna make sure that you know what those words and you know, kind of phrases and keywords are so that if you can change your business name that you, you, know, you can do it now and then hopefully have more success later. So we can start with that. We can start with um, what am I seeing too much of, I guess we'll say. And you may or may not have a business name already that includes this, so I hope it doesn't hurt your feelings, what I'm about to say, if this is you. But um, I guess what I wanna hit home is I'm trying to protect you and you know make your future better. So if this is you and this is already part of your name, you might wanna consider changing it or kind of working around what you've named your business to make it a little more specific. So what I'm seeing is a lot of words that are very vague that I think kind of confuse customers or make customers not really sure kind of like what you're doing. So some of those words are confections. I'll just use my name. My name's Melissa. I'll use it as an example. Melissa's confections. It's, it's super vague, right? Like it's, you know, bakery or bakery business or bakery shop. That's more, that's more specific. Um, I think using the word bakery and bakery shop and such, I think that's good. But the word like confections, special occasions, um, concoctions, all of those, all of those words that are sort of like, they sound fun to say, but they don't really mean anything to the customer. And your business name is really for the customer. It's not really for you. I know, that's, I know that sounds kind of backwards. I mean, you should like your business name, but it should be telling the customers what you're doing and it should also be easy to remember. You also do not, I wouldn't suggest using your name um, unless you have a like a really strong family name that you want to, you know, like a last name that you want to carry down, like, you know, the Phillips Bake Shop, like if that's your last name or whatever, that's different. But if I was going to name my business Melissa's Cakes, that's just not memorable. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's just not a strong name. We tend to do that a lot though, because we work in small communities and people know us. So if I named my business, Melissa's Cakes, people will probably order from me, but you know, it's just not, it's not super memorable and it's really hard to brand. And we'll talk about that next. So that's why I suggest probably not using your name. You also can't really sell your business easily later down the line. Let's say you, you want to sell your business off for a million dollars. They're probably not going to buy it if it's called Melissa's Bake Shop, right? They want it to be something a little more open-ended. Um, you also want to, I would really suggest not miss, uh, don't misspell anything on purpose. So like if your business name was crazy cakes, right? And that's probably someone watching this video. It probably is crazy cakes and you spelled cakes with a K and crazy with a K. Um, the, the difficulty with this is when people are searching for you, a lot of people go online and search online. Um, they're not going to spell it that way. And they're not going to really think about you purposefully misspelling words. So I would super suggest not doing that. Uh, I know a few bakers who've misspelled words, you know, added extra O's, 
or you know done something a little different with the lettering that are doing okay but i can tell you from from my own experience that people had trouble finding me when i had a business name that had a little misspelling in it on purpose they also were sending paypal money to the wrong email address because the word i had used in my name was missing a letter on purpose and they were putting the letter in because that's how you spell the word so they were actually sending money to who knows who you know, their Gmail account through PayPal because they thought that was my email address, right? So that can be problematic. Um, and as far as names go, if, if you can, the number one thing I would suggest, if you can make your name visual, then you should do this. What I mean by that is, let's have two examples. Let's say my business name is Melissa's Cakes. That's gonna be, or let's say it's Melissa's Special Occasion Concoctions or something like that. That's so hard to brand, like imagery. What would, what would be on your logo? How, you know, how would people remember that? Besides your face, like what else you know, could you attach to that name? It's really hard to do. But let's say on this side, you named your business Bluebird Bakery. Oh my gosh, you could have a bird, your colors could be different types of blue, you could have it flying, you could have it perched, you could have a nest. I mean, there's just like all this visual information coming to your head, right? So if you can come up with a name that's visual, it contains a location, it contains a thing, maybe even a person, not yourself. Like if you, like Einstein's bakery, right? Like that's a thing. Like they could have a picture of Einstein, like a fun character picture or something like that. You know, you can, you can make that work. But essentially the visual aspect is really super important. So if, when you're coming up with your business names, if you're writing out a list, just try to have at least a section that includes visual things that are important to you. So let's say, you know, your favorite bird, that's what you want to name your bakery after. Or let's say there's a place that you lived for years, like you lived in Paris and you want to have, you know, you, but now you live in Colorado and you want to have the Paris bake shop. That's cool. Like go with Paris theme. You know, that's popular. That's a good idea. Um, so you definitely want them to be visual. Uh, when you're thinking about your name, now I mentioned that example where I said crazy cakes. Um, this is just my personal opinion, and I'm, you know, I'm sure people might disagree with this, but when I think of a business name, and I think of like giving you a bunch of money to make something really special for me, like a cake, I think it would put me off for your business name to have like crazy, chaotic, wild, you know, like those words that don't really like make you feel confident about the person or the business. Like, would you call someone crazy and then give them a bunch of money for an order? Like probably not. Right. So when you're thinking about words, try to think about words that make people feel comfortable, make people feel excited about what you're doing, make people feel like you're professional and organized. Those are all going to be a little bit more, you know, top notch names that'll probably um, ride you through longer in your career. Um, all, all of this information I'm sure is a lot, but right now we're basically talking about how to make your bakery name last longer, essentially as long as your business goes. So you don't really want to have to change your name. Like if you're starting from home, you don't really want to have to change your name. If you go to a bake shop, like if you have a storefront or whatever, you start selling wholesale, however you want to do it or maybe you always stay at home, it doesn't matter, but you don't really want to have to change your name every time you do something different with your business. So try to name it so it will fit a lot of different arenas, if you will. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you're thinking in your head, okay, I have a better idea of what to name my business, or maybe I should make some changes, or I have an awesome business name, I'm not gonna change anything at all. This is Melissa with Build a Better Bakery. See you later.